Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be looking at the new line of Krakens from NZXT. These will be replacing the X and Y series that you might already know about, and they have different variants as well. So we've got a standard one, they also have an RGB, non RGB, which will be the replacement for the X series. Then you've got the Elite, which will be the replacement for the Z series. This also comes in RGB, non RGB, 240, 280, 360mm variants. So we're going to run you through all the different things and changes and things to know. Also, the screen on here is pretty cool. You can control everything with camera and stuff like that. It's got a really nice resolution on it as well. You also might have noticed that there's a different RGB fan on these as well. These are the new core fans, also available separately in black and white 120, 140mm options. They've got the RGB in the hub rather than the outer ring that you might have seen with the duo fans, for example. So we'll show you all those as well. So I think we just need to get into it now and get opening. So standard Kraken Elite. We're gonna look at the standard one first because I think this is more the one that most people will be buying because of the better price point. The Elite is rather expensive to be fair. Um, so it's gonna be more of a high-end one. So let's have a look at this. So like I said, we have an RGB version, non-RGB version. That's in 240, 280mm and 360mm options. So this one does have a screen on it but it's uh, more of a little central bit in the middle. There's a little bit more of a limit on what you can do with it. Unlike the uh, Elite one here, which we'll show you in later on in the video, which is absolutely crazy. So this one does have an RGB hub as well. RGB variants will come with a hub. Non-RGB variants won't. We've got some instructions straight away. I like that it's not in a plastic bag like we've seen with the cases, so that's good. These are the RGB core fans, exactly the same as you'd find in the multi-pack. So you can literally buy another one of these to match everything to the cases. We'll look at those in a bit more detail in a second. Here we have all the different connectors that will go into the pump itself. Also breakaway cables, so you can do three into one for your RGB fans. Also the USB splitter in there, it's kind of like the Corsair one, you'll find that one goes to the hub and then one goes to the pump top. Now here is our RGB hub, they're using their proprietary connectors for these fans, so a little bit more limiting what you can do, especially if you're using a lot of products that aren't NZXT, but for the majority of things, it's you know fairly straightforward. Here we've got all our mounting hardware. This does support Intel 12th and 13th gen, so Intel 1700. You've also got AM5 support in there as well. You can get a thread rubber bracket as well if you're using that. All black screws, which is always nice for the more stealthy look. The radiator itself. So it's an aluminium or aluminum rad. And then some little debossed NZXT logo on there. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. It is actually a very nice white color as well. It's not like the EK white, it's a little bit off white. It's actually, to my eye, looks fairly you know, standard white. So it will match with the majority of other white components. Um, here's the pump top. Standard Acetec design as well. This is a seventh gen unit. There are eighth uh, ones available now, but this is still the seventh. Tubing is nice and dense. This is a nylon braid and uh, it's got some ultra flexible hoses underneath there as well. Pre-applied thermal paste on the other side, nice copper block, and then the Intel brackets are on by default, but it's very easy to just twist these off and change them over. Now, one little quick thing to note, I typically mount a AIO in a PC with the hoses on the right-hand side, but that will mean that your connections and things will come up the left. So you will want to mount this that way around so you've got your cables going straight up to the top of the motherboard we'll have to do a bit of maneuvering to see how it's going to sit best in your case i'm going to probably say something like that if you're going to mount it in the top so i want to quickly look at the fans so as i mentioned these are the new core fans rgb in the hub that then goes outwards rather than a kind of ring light that we've seen on most ones before and then on the ends we have got four pin pwm and then there is the proprietary connector that i mentioned for the rgb a little bit of shame that's gone with the hub i think i would like to see a standard connector but you know, fair play to NZXT. They do have their motherboards that have the headers built in as well. You can actually use standard 5 volt on there as well, but um, they're obviously going to try and push to use as much of their ecosystem as you can. So you can do three on there. It would be nice if we could put a few extra. Now, plastic to aluminium, they do match fairly well, to be fair. Obviously, there will be a little bit of difference between plastic white and metal white, but looks good for the most part. And there is actually fins underneath the screws, so make sure you don't go too deep with them. Um, some companies do remove the fins that are under screws, but this one seems to be um, against that for this one. That's the standard one. So black and white, RGB, non-RGB, 280, 240, 360 is available. Now let's have a look at the Elite. This is in a whole nother league of what it can do with the pump. Absolutely crazy. It's a 640 by 640 pixel resolution. A 2.36 inch display is actually bigger than this pump as well. You can put GIFs on it, different images, your status, you know, like typical like hardware temperatures and things. 
So again, this is the non-RGB, but I have got the dual fans included as well to make it into an RGB version. Again, instructions, we've got our two fans. So these are 140s as this is a 280 mil cooler. Let's have a look at these quickly. So no RGB on this one. So we've not got an RGB cable, just a four pin for PWM. They seem pretty well built though. There's a nice bit of rubber for anti-vibration. Pushes quite a bit of air just from flicking the blades around. So hopefully the performance will be good. Mounting hardware, same for the other one. So Intel 1700 AM5. It's going to be pretty much the same because it's still Asetek design on this one as well. So no RGB hub with this one. as This is the non-RGB version, but bear in mind you will get a hub if you get the other one. Then we've got the same cables to go into the pump itself, minus the extra USB adapter because we don't have the uh, RGB controller in this one. So looking at the radiator quickly for the Elite, this is again the DBOSS logo. I have noticed that they've got some protection for puncturing the fins, like I mentioned. So underneath each of the screw threads, there's a little plate, so you're not going to screw too far. It would be nice to see that on the standard one as well, because I can see a lot of beginners building with these radiators. Some cases require longer screws as well, so would just prevent any accidents from happening if we had it on this one as well. Now, if you're wondering if the Elite's going to be any cooler for your CPU, they're actually using the same Aztec 7th Gen pump. So you're going to get the same thermal performance if you were to get a 360 of the Elite versus the 360 of the normal standard Kraken. So you're not going to see any changes there. It's mainly all about this pump here and what you can do with it over actual differences in thermal power. So quite considerably bigger of a pump top between the two models. But like I said, this is all about the display that you can do the different graphics on, GIFs and stuff like that. It does seem to weigh a lot more as well, but there's obviously gonna be a lot more going in because you've got a bigger screen in there as well. It's gonna take up the whole of the outside of that mirrored finish, unlike the other one that's just gonna be the small square in the middle. Again, you've got those nice nylon hoses on this one, really super flexible. Then you're gonna to need to have it orientated the same way as the last Kraken as well. So you've got the hoses coming out the bottom, then your connections at the top to go up to the top of the motherboard. On the back again, nice copper block, pre-applied thermal paste. I've got the Intel bracket on by default, but again, very easy to take off and change if you're going to be using AMD. So I'm going to assume you guys are going to want to see what these actually look like all lit up, especially looking at the pump and seeing the block and what it can do. So now I'm going to build up two systems to show you exactly what options you've got. So here are the two systems that I've put together for these coolers. Also, I want to quickly mention a big thank you to Scout the Computers for sending out these graphics cards that you saw in the video. They offer a massive selection of components. If you need anything, then do check them out in the link down below. These graphics cards arrived just before the coolers in the cases, and I think you'll agree they do look pretty epic inside. So we're now into cam to show you what the Kraken can do. As I said, it's a little bit more limited as it is more of a basic display on this one. For now, I've got it on dual infographic, which will show the CPU and the GPU temperatures. You can, of course, change all these colors and things as well if you'd like to show which ones goes for which. If you've got an AMD processor, you could have that set to red. If you're using an Intel, you could set it to blue. And then CPU, you could set to green for NVIDIA or again, or vice versa for AMD, something like that. And then also the logos, text, color, you can do as well. So let's go to image. You can upload a certain picture. So for example, I could do my background. And there you will see just what I said about the little square that's actually in the screen. It's not the full thing. So it is a bit limited on the kind of size and things you can do. Anything but a logo kind of blends in a little bit better. So personally, I would just use this for an infographic. I think it does look a lot better than just something that's square in the middle of the pump. So web integration, you've got Google and some custom integrations you can do, but I'm not going to cover those in this one. Single infographic is the same kind of deal as the dual, but you just have one dial. So for example, I can go for a red and then a blue. And realistically, if you're going to do it for temperature, you'll probably say like blue for the cool side and then red for the hot. But it'll obviously get redder as it goes round with the temperature of the processor. You can obviously set different things as well. So clock speeds, loads as well, which is quite cool. It is default to liquid temperature, but personally, I think CPU load is more appropriate. So single graphic and an image. Let's just show you what this will be. So let's use the previous image. It's partly kind of the dual infographic, but then it just adds an image in the background instead. Personally, I think the uh, single one looks a little bit better. Carousel, we'll literally rotate between the different options. So let's say we want to have an infographic with a CPU load. You can set your, your colors and things like that. You set another one, maybe you want to add your GPU temperature instead. And then you can set colors for that. So let's say we're going to go for, going to start blue and then go for red for heat. Then it will just rotate through those different options that you've set infinitely. So you can see all of your different stats rather than just one. Then clock face is pretty self-explanatory. Again, you can set all your colors. So we can say you have blue hands. We can have red for the seconds. And you've got a couple of different options with the clock face in there as well. So now we've had a look at the basic cooler, let's take a look at the Elite and show you what that can do. 
So for this Kraken Elite, we're using the NZXT Z790 motherboard. We've got a 13700K from Intel. Very similar to the standard Kraken, but we've just got a few extra options. So for example, we can do an image or a GIF like we've seen before. I'm just loading my, uh... hello there. A little bit laggy, but that's because uh, I made it absolutely years ago. Uh, it's moving on. We've got the web integration again. You can do the dual into graphic, a little bit different from the standard Kraken. It goes around the sides rather than you've got one on the top and one on the bottom but you can change all the text colors, background, all that kind of thing. A little bit psychedelic, uh, so probably stick to the black uh, for that one, but you could go for a white one if you'd rather as well. Change the logo color and things like that as well. The single in infographic is a little bit different, so you can set two different colors. So let's go for a custom. So say we want to do like blue for cool on the CPU, and then you can do red for hot. You also do one in the middle as well if you'd rather as well. Just right click to remove that. So for example, we can say red like that. And then we'll run a cine range test and you can see just how that gradient will work. So next one you can do a single infographic and then a GIF as well. Carousel is like before, you can do a multitude of different settings and it will just cycle through them. And then we've also got a clock face, which is a little bit different. We've got a different style. You can do some different gradients on there as well. There's a load of presets. Looks quite nice. And then the last one, we've got audio visual, which will move the little display to different sounds. So for example, if I put something on, that's pretty cool, I like that one. Personally for me, I think the dual infographic is my favorite. So those are the options for the Kraken Elite. So there we go guys, that was a look at the standard and the Elite Kraken from NZXT, the new iterations for 2023. I've got quite a lot to say about these, so please bear, bear with me as I look at my notes, because there's I try to sum it up as best as I can. So testing wise, I used the Cinebench R23 as I usually do on loop. Obviously with the windows on, they're just off now for display. Uh, the regular Kraken had a high temp of 95.4. Now you need to bear in mind that that's using the 7950X, which is the highest skew of the AMD AM5 socket at the moment. Um, so it's going to be hot. Our ambient temperature in the room at the time was 23.4. That gives you a delta of 72 degrees. So I'm going to recommend that you get a 360 if you're using anything over like a 7800X, um, just for the fact that the fans will spin quieter and you won't be having a smaller radiator that needs to push the fans all the time to dissipate the heat. So the 13700K with the 280mm, we saw a high of 96 from the ambient of 23.6. That's a delta of 72.4. I wouldn't go anything smaller than a 280 for a 13700K. It's much like the situation, like I said, with a 360, it's just going to spin quieter, much like an overspec power supply. This, the fan inside is going to spin a lot less. So that's why I always recommend going with the higher wattage than you need as well, purely for the silence factor. The average temperature for the 13700K was 64 degrees, which is obviously a lot better, but the 3700K is obviously a lower spec than the 3950X. So that's the reason in there. I like the fans, the new core RGB fans. I think they're very nice. I did have some problem with the five volt addressable splitter that came on one of the front of the cases. I ended up using a hub from an additional three pack. Just didn't seem to recognize it other than a spectrum cycle, which I wasn't really a fan of. I think it just looks nice all white. So on the topic of the fans, really plan your builds ahead of time because you're gonna run into some problems if you don't. For example, the three fans that I've got on this AIO, I could plug them all in to the included controller, no problems at all. The ones on the front, you get a splitter for addressable five volt, might work in your motherboard. Didn't work for me, as you can see on this black system, the fans at the front aren't lit. Don't know why, what was going on with that, but I've run out of headers on the motherboard, so that's gonna stay like it is. So let's say that's six fans taken care of. If you're gonna replace the one that's on the back with an RGB fan, because you don't like the plain one, I think a lot of people will, that's another proprietary connector that you've got nowhere to put it. Very long-winded, but unless you've got an NXT motherboard, you've got nowhere to plug that in. So you're gonna need another hub for that. So I think a NZXT equivalent of a Corsair Commander would be a really great thing to see here. Maybe six, eight ports even, that you can plug everything into onto one USB motherboard header would really solve all the issues here because this has been quite tedious. Um, and if I didn't have the NZXT motherboards with the headers built in, I would have been absolutely stuck. So something to bear in mind there to avoid any potential disasters down the road. So I think that's all the points that I wanted to make in this video. It's a little bit more than I would generally do for a video like this, but I think it's worth it as I think these are pretty fantastic looking coolers. Let's hope we see some 8th gen Acetex in the next designs as well, because they, they were available, but they just seem to use 7th. So we would see some cooling performance uh, increases with the 8th. So let's hopefully see those in the future. Um, but I think that's it for this one. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will leave links and everything in the description box if you want to pick one of these up. Let me know what you think about them in the comments box below. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to NZXT for sending it out for me to look at. And I'll see you all 
in the next one.